given to these uh, uh, to this sinful activity, wow. and they were teaching uh, that mankind was so evil that it had to have these approvals to indulge in sinful activity, which is in complete objection to the word of God. Because remember, when, in Romans chapter six and verse two, Paul said, "How shall we that are dead to sin?" live any longer therein. Right. In other words, in our conversion experience, we died to sin when we got baptized by the authority of Jesus Christ and we went down in the water. God cut off the old man. We buried him in the act of baptism, baptism rose to walk in the newness of life, and Paul is asking them, just like he asked the Romans, why are you, how shall we that are dead to sin still living in sin? Or rather, how are we Christians still living like sinners? So these approvals were given to indulge in sinful activity when Jesus himself said in Luke 13, 3, I tell you, nay, lest ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So Paul writes this letter to provide some corrections and instructions in righteousness. He writes this letter to the Colossians to combat the false doctrinal teachings and practices existing among the church. One gospel uh, 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 scholar said that this letter was very polemic, meaning it was a direct objection to these false doctrinal teachings as a way to provide necessary critique in sound doctrine. Wow. So Paul wanted them to understand that everything that we need is in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So the problem with these ascetic practices was that they were doing this uh, for themselves and it wasn't to honor God in any kind of way. Yeah. So Paul wanted them to understand that you can't do this on your own. You need to go to God about it. Yeah. Uh, and Christ has all that we need. So much so that he wrote in Colossians 2.10, in chapter 2, verse 10, that we are complete in him. In who? In Christ Jesus. If yeah. anybody's outside of the body of Jesus Christ, outside of the one body that's connected to the one head, Jesus Christ, outside of the church of Christ, that individual is incomplete and needs to be brought into the fold. So Paul wants them to understand that you are complete in Christ Jesus, that he is uh, uh, the source of all creation, that he created us. Because remember, I told you, one thought was that, that these angelic beings created us, but Paul wanted them to understand, just like John the Revelator wanted us to understand, that Christ is the source of all creation, that he created us. You remember in John chapter 1 and verse number 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yeah. The same was in the beginning with God, and by Him were all things made that were made. Without Him was not anything made on, that really? was made. In Him is light, and He is the light of all men. And John tells us in verse 14 that that same Word became flesh, and it was the only begotten of the Father. Yeah, really? Now that could be none other than Jesus Christ yes, being sir. the only begotten of the Father. Yes, which means that since Jesus is the only begotten of the Father, he is the word that became flesh. Since he is the word that became flesh, that must mean he is the word that was God, that was with God, that was in the beginning. Yes, so what Paul is trying to tell these Colossians is he's on, reminding Richard. them yeah. that not only was the word in the beginning, but in the beginning was Jesus. And yes, Jesus is the is is the is Jesus is was with God and Jesus is God. Jesus was in the beginning with God and by Jesus was all things made that were made. Without Jesus was not anything made that was made. Yes, and Jesus is light and Jesus is the light of all men. So all of you on Facebook right now I'm going to type amen and thank you Jesus for Jesus sending Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Uh -huh. So Paul wants them to understand that we ought to worship God and he's rebuking this false doctrinal teaching that we should worship these angelic beings. Yeah. That Jesus is the mediator between God and man, and he is the only mediator between God yes, and yeah. man. Right. Now, in these false doctrinal teachings that these Colossians had been accepting, believing, and practicing, they had developed some bad habits. And Paul knew in order for these Colossians to break away from these bad habits, Prayer was an absolute must. All right. That's why he said in Colossians 4, 2, the scripture that we have, continue in prayer. Watch in the same with thanksgiving. Because some things, some, some bad habits are extremely difficult to break away from. Well, some things, some, some desires that we have are extremely stubborn and just won't die. I told you that darkness is, is like an evil villain 
uh, uh, the, in a movie that just won't stay dead. Well, Sinful desires are the exact same way. You remember those movies like Jason? I don't care how many times Jason got shot. I don't <laughs> care how many times he got stabbed. I don't care how many times he got blown to smithereens. Some kind of way that joker kept getting up. Yeah. Kept getting up so much so they didn't know, the producers, the writers didn't know what kind of movie to make. They even put Jason in space. They didn't know what to do because they couldn't figure out how this Jason kept getting up. Sinful desires are the exact same way. Sometimes the jokers are just so stubborn, they creep up uh, during our weakest moments trying to get us to resurrect them. So, Jesus, so Paul wants us to understand that we have to go to the Lord in prayer and deal them uh, with these bad habits and sinful desires. So he tells us, so, so Paul even understood what it meant to have a thorn in the flesh. We don't know what that thorn was, but uh, sometimes sinful desires can be like a thorn in the flesh. Uh -huh. And Paul, remember when Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 went to the Lord three times asking God to remove this thorn out of his flesh, and Jesus responded that my grace is sufficient for you, yeah. uh, and, and, and my strength is made perfect in the presence of your weakness. So we've got to thank Christ Jesus, and that's what we need to go to when we are dealing and asking God to open some doors for us to deal with the issues that we're experiencing uh, in our lives. Right, and he will counsel us in helping us to, uh, to overcome uh, those trials and those tribulations. That's why James said in James 1, if any of you lack wisdom, yeah. let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally, and upbraid us not, and it shall be given unto him. Yeah. Prayer is an absolute necessary tool in the life of a Christian. Uh, Luke even talked about in Luke 18, 1, how Jesus stressed the importunity of prayer, the persistent need of prayer when he said, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. Oftentimes, some situations that we may go through when we are seeking God to open a door, a way of escape out of that situation, may get so hard that we want to faint. But yeah. don't give up. That's right. Don't give up. Keep pushing through. Right. Even if that door hasn't opened as fast as you wanted it to. Yeah, sir. Don't give up Come on, when, 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 when that door hasn't opened up out of the way yes, you sir. wanted it to or as fast as you That's wanted right. it to. Right. Just oh, know that God is going to open that door That's for right. you yeah. to help yeah. you to overcome that situation. Yes, sir. That yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, Paul even gave the equation to uh, the church at Rome in Romans 12, 12, of how to deal with that issue, how to endure that trial and that tribulation and overcome it when he said rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Meaning rejoicing in hope, as James 1, 2 says, counting all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this that the trying of your faith work with patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be full and complete, yes, lacking nothing. This is an opportunity to thank God that, uh, that, that, that he's going to shape you, he's going to mold you, he's going to further equip you to handle this storm so that when you get out, you know exactly who brought you through it. Oh, when God provides that right. door, that window of opportunity for you to escape that trial and overcome it, you know exactly who to go to. That's and right. he also said, be patient in tribulation. Endure that storm with him. God is right there with you in the midst of that trial. All you have to do is go to him. Like Peter, when he fell, when he started, so he was walking on water towards Jesus, and he looked over, and he saw the boisterous wind, winds, and he got scared, and he sunk. It wasn't until he got his attention right back on Jesus where he needed to be that God pulled him up out of that water and saved him yeah. uh, from drowning. In the midst of any storm, God is there waiting for you to consult with him and talk to him and pray to him and ask him, for your help to get you out of that storm. Because like Brother Boy said one time before, that every storm is to prepare you for the next storm. Mm -hmm. Just hang in there. You're going to make it through, but that storm that you're going through is going to be a tool that God uses to further equip you yeah, for right. the next storm. That's right, man. Now when Paul tells them to continue in prayer, when we go to God, we're asking God to open doors for us because we all want blessings. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I don't just want a blessing. I want many blessings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when we go to God, we're asking God for those doors to be open, for us to be blessed, for us to be blessed, whether it's out of the things that we need or things that we want. Paul instructs them 
to not forget about God when we go to him and ask him to open those doors. In verse number 3 of Colossians 4, he said, with all, meaning in addition, as a further factor or consideration, uh -huh. praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ. So Paul is instructing them that when we pray, we are asking God to open doors for those blessings. Don't forget to tell God how you're going to use those blessings to bless him. Come on, come on, so don't forget about God when we go to him and we're asking God to open doors for us. If we're struggling on one job and we're praying that God blesses us with a new job, don't forget to not just ask God for the job and to pray with thanksgiving uh, like Paul told us in verse 2, but also don't forget to talk to God about how you can use Come that on, blessing to bring much glory to his name. That's right. That's right. I'll give you an example. When my wife and I a few years ago were looking for a house, we got denied all many, so many times I can't even keep count. Uh, every time we applied for, for, for credit, we didn't have no credit. We couldn't get no house. But we, and we started praying to God because we were interested in buying a home. We were seeing how much we were paying for rent for somebody else's house, for somebody else's boat, as Brother Goodman says, for somebody else's beach house, and we wanted a piece of our own house. So we started asking God to bless us with a house and we could begin uh, our family. And, and we started looking, and, and Boo thinks she wanted new construction. Now, I was just happy with just getting, you know, a, a nice townhouse, you know, maybe at least 10 years old at the latest, and, and, and I was fine with that. But Boothang had bigger and better plans. She had bigger and better dreams. So sometimes you got to think big. So that time she was right. Uh, so that time she was right. So, she, she, so, so we started looking for new construction. Now, when you buy new construction, oftentimes the house ain't been built yet. Come on. So you go and you buy the lot and you assemble the house by going to the design center, sir. picking out the finishings, picking out the, the fixtures and the light fixtures and the faucets and the toilets and the, 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 uh, the carpet and the paints and all that kind of stuff. And we did all that with just one house. Three months, we watched the house grow from bottom to top. We put the soul sign in the lot before there was even a house there. Every night we were going to that place, praying for that place, looking through it, seeing what they had did, picturing our family and our kids yes, running through the house and things that yes, yes, yes. Now, when it got time to secure the loan, we still had a problem with credit. Uh, so when we got time to secure the loan, we got denied. For three months, we went through looking for that house, praying for that house, asking God for that house, and we was denied. But sometimes your dreams is not always God's plans. Because right. right down the street, was a bigger and better house. Yes, sir. So we started, we had to, we, now we cried about it, we fussed about it, we got mad about it, but then we picked ourselves off, we dusted off, we wiped the tears, and then we went right back out there trying to find one. Yeah. And we changed how we pray. See, Paul said, when you pray, Come on, pray. he said, continue in prayer. Pray with thanksgiving. Yeah. So, and then, when you pray, don't forget about how you can use that Come blessing yes, to benefit sir. God. All right, all right. So when we change how we pray, doors started opening up. Yeah. Yes, we sir. started praying that God would bless us with the house that he had for us so that we can bring the word into the community. Yes, sir. When we started praying like that, God not only opened up a door, but he opened up the floodgates. Yes, we found a bigger house, a better house, in a, in a better community, at a cheaper price, yes, sir. better finishes, better fixtures, yes, better designs, some of the pink stuff from that. I mentioned that it was bigger and cheaper. Yes, I, I don't mean just a couple grand cheaper. I mean like 40 grand cheaper, oh, yeah. but that's almost Great. twice as big. Now, I don't yeah, know yeah, how yeah. you can do something like that, but I praise God and I thank him yes, for blessing sir. us with the house. Now, when you pray, you tell God how you're going to use that blessing yeah. to bring blessings to him. Don't forget what you said when you get the blessing. Right. So what I had to do days, I didn't want to go outside, and it's hot out there, and I'm in a shirt and tie going to knock on some doors. And uh, I'm passing out flyers for Bible studies. We got a Facebook page uh, for our community. I'm putting for, putting the, the, the uh, asking them to tune in to the sermons. Hopefully some is on there right now. Yes, and you can type amen that I went out there too, did you? No, I didn't. Yes, uh, yes, but sir. when you add, tell God that you're going to use the blessing for his cause, don't forget to use the blessing for his cause once yeah. you receive it. That's right. Now, That's another right. thought is when asking God to open doors, don't make God to don't make God force you to walk through the door. Oh, don't make God force you to walk through the door. Uh -huh. You remember Jonah? 
when Jonah, uh, when God told Jonah, go on down to Nineveh well, to preach. And Jonah said, man, them Ninevites, they down there crazy. They crazy. They, they Gentiles, they crazy. They capturing their enemies. They pulling the flesh off. They pulling the skin off the bone in a way of torture. Uh, uh, they're crazy down there. They don't like what I got to say. My life is at stake. So, none of, so Jonah, when he got up, Jonah, the Bible says that Jonah got up with the intentions of going in the complete and opposite direction. Yeah. So when Jonah got up, he found a boat going somewhere else, jumped on the boat, the water started troubling, the men on the boat started asking, what did you do to us? He said, cast me into the sea and it will be all right. Jonah went down into the water, the fish swallowed him up. Now God is now giving him some time, three days at least, giving him some time to recognize who's in charge and the door he needs to walk through that God just opened. Yeah. Uh -huh. So when that fish spit him up on that dry land, from where Jonah was, it was a three days journey to get to them. Jonah got there so fast, he got there in one. He was triple timing. You know, military say double time. He was triple timing uh -huh. to get there as fast as he could because when God tells you to go through the door, you just go through the door and let God take care of the rest. Right. You don't need to worry about what, what the man going to do, what the devil going to do because the devil is always busy. He's always trying to prevent the gospel from spreading. He's always trying to prevent the doors from opening. But just know, when God opens the door, no man can shut it. As a matter of fact, God will open the door and take it off the hinges so nobody can right. even try to shut it. So let God do his thing and you just follow suit. Now, when we are asking God to open doors, there's two doors that we need God to open. One door, as Paul said, is the door of others, the window of opportunity, if you will, to share the word of God that we will be welcomed in to testify about the goodness of Jesus Christ, to share what he's done for us, to share about his crucifixion, dying for the sins of the world, sure, and bro. talk about uh, his one and only church, yeah. uh, the one body that's connected to the one head. Now, the second door we need him to, God to open is the door to their heart to allow the word of God to dwell in and that they will accept it. So that the receiver who is receiving the word will accept that, 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 that message and allow it to dwell in. Well, preacher, if they're receiving it, ain't they accepting it? Have you ever received a package that you ordered, didn't like when it came there, and didn't accept it and sent it back? Uh -huh. So some folks will receive the message, they won't like the package, and will try to discard it or will discard it as in a way of not accepting the message. So we want God to open up the door of opportunity to share the word and also to open up the door to their heart. Not this heart. This heart just got four chambers that filter blood through. This heart, because uh, the Bible says, so a man thinketh in his heart, yes, so is he. Yeah. So we want God to open up that door to their heart so that they can allow the word of God to oh, dwell in preach. them richly Amen. that will prick their heart and cause them to lead them to obey the word of God that they too will be added uh, to his body. That's right. Yeah. So we want God to make sure to, so we want to make sure that God opens those doors uh, that no man uh, can shut. Because we know always said that the devil is always busy. He's always trying to prevent the spreading of the gospel. He's always trying to keep us from sharing the word and creating and cause some kind of opportunity for him for, for us not to be able to share the word. Sure. While James sure. said, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Uh -huh. He didn't never say he wasn't coming back. He said, resist him and he'll flee. Now he flee. No, he coming back. He coming back with a vengeance. Uh, because you resisted them the first time. Yes, but sir. no, you got a God, you got a, a, a Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that can hunk you down, that when the devil brings a storm, he can give you peace right in the midst of it. Yeah. So just know that the Lord Jesus Christ is right there with you Preach, in the midst of the storm. That's right. Uh, Paul prayed that doors would be open, uh, that doors would be open, that, 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 that the gospel would be spread and taught to those who we come in contact with. And he's talked about the mystery of God. And it's not that we're making some, something up or, or, or there's something that people don't know. Uh, the mystery of God is simply referring to that which hasn't been made known to those who don't know it. So we want to make sure God opens up those doors of opportunity so that when the gospel is preached, That's right. they can make, it will be made known unto them uh, the teachings of the word of God. Yeah, man. So right. we want to make sure that as we share God's holy and divine word, that he opens the door of opportunity to share the word, 
that is received and accepted and obeyed, that it pricks the hearts of those who we are teaching, those who we are preaching to, so that they too may have an opportunity uh, at, a, at a, the tree of life to dwell in the, in the kingdom of God, the church of Christ, the body that's the one body that's connected to the head, the one and only church that we can trace the roots back to the establishment in, in, in Jerusalem, uh, that we can trace the roots back, back to the Bible. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody has that opportunity yes, sir. to share, to, to be a part of the yes, body of Jesus man, Christ. Man. And maybe you're tuning in this day. Maybe you're, 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 you're on Facebook Live, you've been invited by somebody, or you're on Zoom, and you've been invited by someone mm -hmm. to tune into the worship service. And you've heard the gospel today, and you so desire to be a member of the body of Jesus Christ. You desire to be a member of the Church of Christ, the church that you can find history of existing in Scripture that Jesus Christ authorized. Uh, the salvation process is so simple that a child can understand it. Uh, you have to first hear the Word of God. Second thing you must do is you must have, you must believe it. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You must repent of your sins. He said, Luke 13, 3, Jesus said, I tell you now, unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Uh -huh. Next thing you must do is confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Romans 10, 9, 9 and 10. Uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Uh, that you confess with the mouth, with the heart believes. Uh, and last thing you must do is be baptized in water by the authority of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Once you fulfill that, those steps uh, of salvation, you'll be granted the gift of the Holy Spirit. Your name will be written in heaven. Everything that you do, every sin that you may have committed from the time you knew right from wrong, all the way up until you went down in the water, is wiped clean, and God takes the memory of it, He drops it into the sea of forgetfulness, never to bring it back up again. Yeah. And if you are, are, are tuning in today and you so desire to be saved, reach out, reach out to the Catholic Church of Christ. Reach out to those who may have invited you. Uh, if you're online right now, you can look at all the members that are tuning in right now and just type that you want to be saved. And we will make sure that we contact you and set up a time and date to get you here so that we can baptize you. The water is always ready. That's right. Brother Gooden keeps it warm for you. So you ain't got to worry about it getting cold. Uh, you gotta worry about your hair. You can't get your hair done right now anyway. Uh, <laughs> Put on a cap. All you gotta do is tell us that you desire to be saved. Yes, yes, yes. And maybe you're tuning in right now and you've heard the gospel today. You're hearing about the Church of Christ and you want to know more. Still reach out to us and we will be glad to set up a time where we can uh, tune in with you and share the God, share the word of God, and show you and demonstrate to you. How that the Church of Christ right. is God's one and only bride that He's connected to. Preacher, uh, and maybe you're here to maybe you're tuning in today. You are a member of the body of Jesus Christ, and you've been praying, you've been asking God to open doors for you, uh, but you kind of forgotten about how you're going to use that blessing for God's sake well, to bring Him much glory to His name. You repent today, you can ask God for forgiveness, uh, and, 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 and that will be dropped into the sea of forgiveness. The church will forgive you, the Lord will forgive you, and you can move forward. In Christ Jesus, right. fulfilling His will and defending the Word of God. If that be, well, if one of those uh, be one of you, continue to reach out to us. We will be glad to touch base with you to continue to share uh, God's holy and divine word. And now let's go into your prayer um, as we move on to the next portion of our service. Where Brother Huggins will come and pray over the offering and uh, give us our communion. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, our Lord, our God, our righteous and wonderful ruler, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. We pray, Father, that we continue to study your holy and divine word, that we continue to be educated, edified, and encouraged through your word, Father, that we can continue to be further equipped uh, to fight the good fight of faith, to run this Christian way of grace, to lay aside the weights and the sin that easily besets us, dear Lord, and withstand the files of the wicked, uh, that we can endure each and every storm that comes our way. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice that you made on Calvary's cross, uh, that we all now can have a chance at salvation and dwell with you in heaven, gather around your throne, singing praises unto you day and night in, in your royal kingdom of heaven. Father, we thank you for blessing us to be a part of your church. Continue to watch over us, continue to bless us, continue to bless us to, to, to plant the seed, Father, to water the seed, Lord, and we ask that you continue to provide the increase, Father, that we can do greater works here in this city uh, and in this county of Annapolis and Illinois County, Maryland. Father, we love you. We thank you. Watch over us and bless us. Keep us in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes.
now come to this portion of our worship to God to bless the offering that we've received. We also come to reflect upon the sacrifice.